Hi, I'm Michael Johnson, President and CEO of Boys and Girls Clubs of Dade County. Uh, we are proud to bring to you from Madison 365, Capital Times, and Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County, uh, Black History Month, the Madison edition. This is a, uh, a tribute uh, to a mother who asked us to put together a video like this because she was concerned about how black history is portrayed in our public schools. We hope that you enjoy this video and that you understand the many accomplishments of blacks right here in Madison, Wisconsin. Sometimes we focus so much on slavery in the civil rights movement that we forget the shared accomplishments achieved by African Americans right here in our backyard. The video will highlight how the black community has influenced the greater Madison region in Wisconsin for more than 175 years. One additional note, this is not a list of every black Madisonian who has done or is doing great things in our city. There are far too many people doing great work that we could possibly recognize in this video. This is simply our best attempt to outline the rich history of our community, the important moments, the first, and the pioneers for those who might not know these important stories. I hope this helps you celebrate Black History Month and for the schools who do not celebrate Black History Month, I hope this video gives you a guide to start planning. It starts in 1839. An unidentified African-American woman was the servant to the owner of the American House Hotel. She became the first black resident of Madison. No identification is available on her name she apparently stayed in Madison until 1845. In 1847, the census listed a black man resident by the name of Darkey Butch. I doubt if that was his real name. He lives alone with no apparent connection to a white family. He is one of six black residents in a Madison population of more than 632 residents. In 1848, as Wisconsin became a state, black families began to arrive and their purpose for coming to our city was to be free and to pursue economic opportunity in a new way of life. 1850, Jay Anderson, a black barber who was from Ohio, opens his own barber shop right here in our city. He arrived back in 1848 and purchased a lot on Oldman and Henry Street for a combined of 400 bucks. 1852, Easton Hemings, the son of Thomas Jefferson, and a slave, Sally Hemings. They moved to Madison from Ohio. He and his family are now buried in Forest Hill Cemetery right here in our city. 1857, William Nolan becomes the first black person to be nominated for a statewide post, but he never takes office. He was from New York City, and his kids would become the first blacks born in Madison, Wisconsin. He would eventually be nominated for the state position of notary public, and the governor accepts the nomination, but the Secretary of State at the time refuses to accept the bond with the notion this man is a nigger and the secretary refuses to foul his bond. Nolan is never appointed to the position. 1866, 
Madison gets his first black candidate for mayor, but not at his own choosing. The Wisconsin Supreme Court delivered that blacks have had the right to vote since 1849. Four days later, William Nolan appears on the ballot for mayor against incumbent Alicia Keys, a Republican. The chosen Democrat declined to run, and the party wants Nolan to run as an independent. Nolan is insulted, saying that the Democrats have been responsible for the attitudes promoting white supremacy. But his name, nonetheless, ends up on the ballot. Nolan loses 692 to 306, and he said that he voted for the incumbent. 1902, the Free African Methodist Church is founded by John Turner, a former Kentucky slave, and for years served as the center of the Madison's black community. 1913, Mount Zion Baptist Church is formed as Madison's second black religious organization, originally meeting at the First Baptist Church downtown before moving its own building at 548 West Johnson Street in the early 1920s. 1915, John Hill and his wife, Amanda Carmichael, a black-owned grocery store that ran for more than 50 years in our city on East Dayton Street. His daughter was Franny May, was the first black graduate at UW-Madison. 1916, Wisconsin's first black newspaper, the Wisconsin Weekly Blade, Founded by Madison's black leaders, Chestina and J. Anthony Josie. The newspaper runs social notes, church news, and other articles of importance to the African American community. 1920, the local NAACP chapter is started. It focused primarily around supporting national programs instead of dealing with local issues in Madison, Wisconsin. 1940, the depression continues to hit the black community hard. In Wisconsin, 46% of the black population is unemployed compared to 13% of whites. In Madison, the black unemployment rate is 25%. Madison is also reported to be the most congenial city in the state for black people, but segregation is standing in the way. Of 365 black residents, 80% live in only three of Madison's 20th wards, mostly on the south side of Madison and the near east side. The same year, Stanley Shevers becomes Madison's first black bus driver after being mistaken for a white man at the time of his hire. 1945 was the last year which no blacks was represented on the athletic fields of UW Madison. 1949, the South Madison Neighborhood Center opens at 609 Center Street, which is now the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County. The construction of the location was coordinated by Willie Lou Harris, a black community organizer. 1953, Carson Gully, a chef at UW Madison, and his wife Patrice, became Madison's first black TV personalities. WMTV invites the chef and his wife to host a cooking show called What's Cooking? It was the only program in the United States to feature a black husband and wife team on TV in the 1950s. 1956, Sidney Williams became the first black starting quarterback in modern Big Ten history right here at UW-Madison. 1958, Helen McLean gets an interview with MMSD and would become their first black teacher. But the interviewing committee decided that they did not want to hire her. The committee chair says he didn't think that parents of white students would be comfortable with a black teacher. McLean is soon hired to be a teacher in Beloit. After the story reaches the media, Madison hires her and she begins to work at Longfellow Elementary. 1962, with the civil rights movement fully engaged around the country, some tell Madison NAACP President Marshall Colston that they want to see demonstrations happening locally in our city. He is quoted saying, this isn't Birmingham, and he tells the Wisconsin State Journal 
in a July 30th story that demonstrations wouldn't serve the same purpose here in our city, not now. That same year, Will Smith Jr. and a group of his friends started playing football in their backyard. What came from that grew the Southside Raiders. From these pickup games, the Southside Raiders would become one of the most successful youth football programs in our city. 1963, Madison City Council passes an ordinance prohibiting discrimination in housing and unemployment, but the housing sections are watered down by amendments exempting owner-occupied houses and apartments. Mayor Henry Reynolds cast a tie-breaking vote for the proposal. The Madison Equal Opportunities Commission is formed in 1964. Three years after Carson Gully's death, UW-Madison names a building after an African-American for the first time. That same year, Les Richardson comes to Madison as Wisconsin's first black assistant football coach. In 1970, he became UW-Madison's assistant to the chancellor for affirmative action, a post that he kept all the way through the 1980s. 1968, the National Urban League approves an affiliate right here in Madison, Wisconsin. Funding for the group is initially rejected by the Giver Fund, now known as the United Way of Dane County. They claim that discrimination as it exists in other communities does not exist in Madison. That same year, Reverend James C. Wright, the father of Dina Wright, served as chairman of the Equal Opportunities Commission. Then he was selected by Madison's mayor as the group's first executive director. A school was later named in his honor. 1969, John Winston Sr., father of Johnny Winston Jr., broke the color barrier on the Madison Police Force, becoming the first black police officer in our city. 29 years later, he would retire as a lieutenant, serving as a recruiter and a mentor for a generation of black officers on the force. 1970, Barbara Nichols was the first African-American president elected to the Wisconsin Nurses Association, making her the first African-American to hold this position in the organization's 100-year history. And she would later become the first African-American to hold a cabinet-level position in Wisconsin when she was appointed the Secretary of the Department of Regulation and Licensing. 1971, Clyde Stubblefield became famous as a funky drummer of James Brown Band. Settles in Madison, he would go on to perform locally and continue to tour until his death in 2017. 1972, Charlene Harris Hodge became the first African-American woman anchor on Channel 15 to be followed by news anchors like Mike McKinney who became one of Madison's most popular TV personalities. 1973, MMSD adopts an affirmative action policy that commits the school district to actively recruit minorities and women for jobs. Eugene Parks, who became the first African-American city council person, would argue that well-qualified minorities could have been hired for the district positions had they known about these job opportunities. 1974, the Madison Fire Department hires its first black firefighters, Johnny Jackson, Jeff Green, and Jerry Green. 1975, Pia Kenny James becomes the first African-American woman police officer in Madison. 1976, Dr. John Owen becomes the first affirmative action officer for MMSD and would become the first black middle school principal in our city. That same year, Bill Cofield and Edwina Walls become the first African-American coaches to coach in the Big Ten right here at UW-Madison. 1983. Two neighborhood community centers filed a complaint with the Federal Office of Civil Rights claiming racial discrimination by the Madison School District. Richard Harris and Sandra Solberg 
working at the two community centers, Neighborhood House and the South Madison Neighborhood Center, would call Superintendent Douglas Ritchie plan to close elementary and middle schools another step in undermining equal opportunities for kids of color. The courts would rule in 1983 that the Madison School District was indeed discriminating against minority students in the school's closures and boundary changes. 1985, Michelle Du Bois Richardson, who earned a master's and PhD at UW Madison, will become the first African American nurse to hold a position of head nurse and nurse manager in the 60 year history of the University of Wisconsin Hospital. 1987, black students are suspended three times more often than their white students in Madison a report prepared by the Urban League of Greater Madison. 1988, Candace McDowell will become the founding director of UW Madison's Multicultural Center, and she will serve in that role for 22 years. 1990, Katherine Jackson will become the first African-American woman to become a Madison firefighter. That same year, Miss Malele would take over Moja Magazine. She believed that the white media had a history of focusing on the black struggles of African Americans. She later became the first black person elected to any school board in Wisconsin. Milton McPike was named one of the 10 American heroes in education by Reader's Digest and was named Wisconsin Principal of the Year. After serving as a principal at East High School for more than 20 years after his death, a city park, a field house, and a memorial scholarship has been named in his honor. 1991, Francis Huntley Cooper becomes the first African American in Wisconsin elected mayor. She would become the mayor of the city of Fitchburg. That same year, Gotti Bendan and Betty Banks, who are the co-founders of Club TNT, started Madison Times in 1991. 1992, Paul Higginbotham was appointed Madison's first municipal judge and was elected Dane County's first African-American judge in 1994. He is also the first African-American to sit on the Wisconsin Court of Appeals, let alone any appellate court in the state's history. 1993, the Madison School District renamed Van Heist Middle School on the city's west side, Van Hamilton Middle School, after the African American civil rights leader helped find the NAACP. She was a tireless advocate for children and the black community. Richard Williamson was appointed the first African American police chief in the city of Madison. 1994, Napoleon Smith becomes the first African-American president of the Madison City Council. 1995, Gloria Latson Billings was the first African-American woman to earn tenure in the UW School of Education and was the first African-American woman in the School of Education to earn an endowed chair. 2003, Henry Sanders becomes the first black executive of the Greater Madison Chamber of Commerce. He also helped start the Small Business Advisory Council. Henry would also become the first African American to run for Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin. 2004, Noble Ray. Noble Ray is the first African American police officer at MPD, promoted through the ranks of police chief. He was appointed chief of police of the city in 2004 before becoming chief. He received outstanding service awards as a member of the Madison Police Department during his 28 year career. 2008, Fabu Phyllis Carter is appointed by the mayor as Madison's first black poet laureate. 2009, Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County launches the Avid Tops program which would become the largest public-private partnership in the Madison School District. Yours truly will secure more than $15 million to help low-income children 
graduate from high school and persist through college. 2010, Ismail Ozain was appointed by Governor Jim Doyle and will become the first African-American district attorney in Dane County. 2011, the University of Wisconsin renamed Frederick Hall to Vail Phillips Hall in honor of Phillips. She was first in many achievements in Wisconsin, including being the first African-American woman to graduate from the University of Wisconsin-Madison Law School and the first woman and African-American to be elected Secretary of State. In that same year, Clean Care, the president and CEO of the Urban League, claimed that MMSD ranked among the worst in the country in terms of the racial achievement gap. Clean Care proposed the Madison Preparatory Academy for Young Men, better known as Madison Prep. This was a charter school geared towards boys of color in grades 6 through 12. The school board would vote 5 to 2 in December of 2011 to deny Madison Prep a chance. Marsha Anderson becomes the first African-American woman to achieve the rank of Major General in the U.S. Army. 2012, firefighter Malin Michael Mitchell becomes the first black majority party nominee for Lieutenant Governor in the recall election of Governor Scott Walker. In that same year, Keetra Burnett starts Madison Black Women's Rock, an annual celebration of the significant contributions of black women in our city. 2013, Dr. Jack E. Daniels became the first African-American of Madison College, a 106-year-old institution and community staple in Madison. That same year, Khalif Mob L founded Breaking Barriers Mentoring Inc., aimed at working with youth facing society barriers. Minister Khalif becomes a prominent voice in the community, highlighting issues around mass incarceration. 2014, Percy Brown. Percy becomes the first African-American executive in the Middleton Cross Plains School District when he becomes the first ever Director of Equity and Student Achievement. 2015, Pastor Alex G. led a group of community leaders to develop a plan called Justified Anger to address the racial achievement disparities in Dane County. That same year, Henry Sanders launches Madison 365 and becomes the largest African-American electronic news outlet focused on people of color in the state of Wisconsin. Barbara McKinney, Sherry Carter will become the first African-American women to be elected on the Madison City Council. Marilyn Peebles Ruffin becomes the first person of color to the Sun Prairie School District and the first person of color elected to any public office in the city of Sun Prairie. Brandy Grayson becomes a prominent voice in the community. As one of the founders of Madison's Young Gifted and Black Coalition, she begins to challenge systemic oppression of black people after an officer-involved shooting of Tony Robinson. 2016, Judge Everett Mitchell. A local black pastor holding two undergraduate and three advanced degrees becomes a circuit court judge in Dane County. He was elected in April of 2016 at the age of 39 and is now one of the youngest circuit court judges in Wisconsin. Corinda Rainey Moore becomes the first and only African American to serve as board chair of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Dane County, Safe Communities, and Leadership Wisconsin. 2017, Sabrina Madison launched the Progress Center for Black Women and was featured in news outlets across the country. She founded the Black Women's Leadership Conference and also the Black Business Expo. That same year, Angela Byer Whiston became the first African-American woman to become a tenured professor in the School of Medicine. Vanessa Ray McDowell became the first African-American to become the CEO of the YWCA of Madison in its 109-year history. Tanisha Harbert 
opens the first black beauty school in Madison. And then we have Julia Nieper, a black student at UW-Madison, earns a PhD in biophysics at 23 years of age, making her one of the youngest PhD earners in the country. The Focus and Eruption Coalition is founded by community leaders including Martin Lackey, Anthony Cooper, Khalif Mob L, Jerome Dillard, Jackie Morris, and Aaron Hicks. Together they developed the city's first comprehensive grassroots violence prevention plan for the city of Madison during a time where the city murder rate was at an all-time high. The group was successful in lobbying the mayor of Madison, who committed to $3 million in city funding to address violence in the city of Madison. We want to recognize Jasmine Sabata, who is an MD, has a master's in public health, will become the first black woman to graduate a UW-Madison Preventative Medicine and Public Health Residency Program. We also want to recognize Black Achievers. Lisa Payton Care started Black Women's Wellness Day in 2012, which encourages Black women to take ownership of their health. Michelle Beckney, who became the first African American president of the State Bar Association of Wisconsin. We also want to recognize 100 Black Men. It was incorporated in 1995 and is currently run by Dr. Floyd E. Rose. Maurice Cheeks is known for his work on the Madison City Council. He was first elected Alder of District 10 in 2013, which includes Ally Drive, one of Madison's most challenging neighborhoods. And then we also finally want to recognize Michelle Nichols, Wayne Strong, and Ali Madru all who ran for the Madison School District in the last decade, championed the issues facing black children in MMSD, but they were not successfully elected. 2018 and beyond can be you. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that uh, you will celebrate black history, that you will learn from our past and celebrate our future.